Hello everyone, Jackson here on behalf of Torfine.com and Future Days, and today it is another exciting episode of Artist Interviews. Today, I am sitting with Lau. How are you doing today? Hi, Jack. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm on a bit of a vacation, so I'm pretty nice. happy. I mean, it's nice weather, you know, birds are chirping, you know, I'm home. Not doing oh. anything too crazy, not going anywhere crazy, but uh, just kind of just getting back to who I am a little bit. Yeah, a oh, I love LA. How nice to be in LA. Uh, well, I'm in Barcelona, which is not bad either. It's lovely. Um, it's meant to be winter, but it's really not winter at all. It's like, it's quite warm and mild and nothing like London. Um, I just moved to Barcelona from London a couple of months ago and and I think it's snowing in London. It's really cold right now. And, and here it's just lovely. You don't, you don't feel the winter. So I'm sure you're used to it in California anyway. But to me, it's something new. And I, I'm really enjoying it. Really enjoying it. You know, we, we like to say this thing in California. We kind of go, we only have two seasons, spring and summer. There's nothing else. Amazing. You know? Amazing. The, the, I love that. That's a dream. Oh, that's it. That's the, the, the like lowest temperature we get here is like, 50 like between 50 and 60 degrees that's like the lowest like we usually Amazing. get sometimes it'll dip into the 40s but never like nothing in the, within the los angeles area it does that you know I love so that. I love we, get, that. we get kind I love of fortunate that. with that you know yeah yeah i'm not made for cold weather you know i used to suffer a lot in london with the cold weather i'm not wired for that i'm not you know i'm from argentina originally i'm used to the heat you know and i love it and i, I, I would be in shorts and flip-flops all year round if i could like literally that would be me happy you know so having to wear like snow jackets and snow boots and gloves and scarves and to me it was a struggle it was a struggle for for 21 years that i lived in london it was it was hard the winters were really long but uh no more no more i'm in barcelona now and it's lovely <laughs> that's awesome that is awesome and i look forward to coming out to barcelona sometime and oh. see, you know and experiencing the weather and and, and seeing that is definitely oh. one place i would love to travel to for sure one of the best cities in the world. Of course, London as well. Uh, absolutely love London. It's got so much to offer. Uh, but Barcelona to me is new and fresh and there's so much to discover. And you can walk, you just walk everywhere. It's so, it's kind of small. You can walk probably an hour and a half. You can be everywhere in Barcelona, you know. Um, you don't need to take a train or anything. You, or you can get those free bicycles and it's just lovely. It's lovely. That's I awesome. mean, LA is huge compared to Barcelona, I'm sure, you know. Yeah, I mean, you got to drive everywhere, get on a freeway, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, people, exactly. people like, you know, think yeah. about like freeways is like, you know, when we talk about like, Distance. oh, you got to get on, you got yeah. so much to do to get everywhere that you want to go, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, I I mean, the last time I was in uh, London, I was like, uh, I remember I was, we was there during like summertime. So I didn't oh, get lovely. to experience the cold, the cold weather, but. The two weeks uh, of summer, beautiful. you were there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all nice two weather. weeks of summer yeah there's only two weeks um but yeah no london in the summer is absolutely gorgeous i mean i wish the summers were longer in london because it's, it's beautiful I, I have a beautiful garden in my house in london and 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 yeah i didn't get to enjoy it as much because it was just so so short you know but yeah. anyway lots of great things about london anyway i cannot get wait to get back overseas for sure i cannot wait yeah. Oh my God, come and visit. And come, come to Europe yeah. when, when we're allowed to travel. Come. <laughs> exactly, exactly. One day, next year. Day. Yeah. So today we're going to ask you a couple of questions and see where it goes from here. Are you ready to get into it? I'm ready. Let's do it. What are three of your most memorable moments from your musical career? I think there's more than three, but um, I'll, I'll name a couple. Um, opening for Erasure on the American tour with Nina, that was amazing because it was the first time that I was performing songs that I wrote. Um, and um, to me, it was really special. It was like between two and 3,000 people every night. Beautiful venues all around America, all around the East Coast, from Florida all the way to New York. And um, I absolutely loved that. I, I listened to Erasure growing up. So it was, it was insane to open for them and to hear Andy Bell warming up in the dressing room next door. It was just insane. I actually recorded the warm-ups. <laughs> I, I recorded him because I was like, this guy's a genius, you know? It's like having Freddie Mercury next door. That's, that's what it felt like to me. And least, imagine listening to Freddie Mercury warm up, you know? That's what, that's what I felt like. Um, 
and we were like with Nina, we we're like, oh my god, look at his warm-ups, they're amazing. Let's just do this. Yeah. So that was that was one huge thing for me and for Nina, I think for both of us, it was really important. Another thing was playing Top of the Pops, which is a famous, I don't know if you know it over there, but in the UK it's quite a big thing. It's a music show. Um, playing Top of the Pops with Sam Sparrow. That was great. I was drumming for him in 2007, 2008. And that same show, it was a Christmas special. And uh, guess who played just before me? It was Coldplay. And just before that, it was Adele. So it was an incredible show that will always stay in my, in my heart. Um, and then I think another, but there's a few more, but uh, memorable, memorable things, uh, writing music with Ricky Wilde, you know, Kim Wilde's brother, and having Kim performing one of the songs I've co-written, that, that was also a highlight last year um, for Nina's uh, remixes album, the, the Cynthia and the remixes. I'm going to give you four, I'm going to give you one more, which is um, also when I was touring with Sam Sparrow, opening for Robin and opening for Adele, those were really big things for me because I got to know them close up and uh, um, sort of become friends with Robin and, and Adele and so talented. Both, both these women are so talented. And, and this was a long time ago. This was like 12 years ago, you know, and, or 11 years ago. And now they're, they're absolutely huge. They're, they are the biggest pop stars in the world, you know, but so I was, I felt so privileged to just to be sharing the stage with them, you know, again, being hanging out backstage at festivals and, and, and venues. Um, so, so yeah, I've, I've had loads of beautiful highlights and moments that I, that I treasure and that really, as a musician, you feel, oh, I think I'm doing the right thing. I think I'm going in the right path because I'm surrounded by these super talented people that I look up to. So I've had a few of those moments. Those are some awesome moments right there. And, you know, being able to share those, you know, and you're right, like being able to be involved with these artists, you know, before like, you know, like getting, getting to know them before, like they have become these huge, like massive, I guess you will, like, you know, unreachable. Yeah. 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 And reach, you know what I mean? Unreachable, if you will, in, in some ways, you know, like being able to share those stages and being able to talk with them because they really are your peers, you know, like being able yeah. to form these friendships and, and get to know them on a personal level, you know, that, that right there is, is, you know, that's, that's priceless, you know, like being yeah. able to be in those, in those moments, you know, and you're right, top of the pops, right? I've heard, you know, you know what? Heard, okay. Yes, I know. I know. You know, I mean, a lot of amazing artists have played on that. Yeah. And, you know, for a number of years, for a number of years. So it's amazing. You got to do that with Sam Sparrow. You know, I'm a fan of Sam Sparrow's music. Yeah. Well, he's in LA. So you probably, yeah. you know, maybe your neighbors. And, and Roy like, Bishop, who's his brother. Yeah. So he also lives in LA, I believe. Who did Sorry, a remix for me on the deluxe version of the album. I don't know if you heard the, all the remixes um, on my album, but uh, James, Troy Bishop did one as well. It's fantastic. Um, Which is also yeah. another another amazing another amazing remix, you know. And you're right, James. I did have James on the show um, before uh, a few episodes back. You know, we did you know talk, and uh, you know he's he's one of those other those other guys that you know is just an amazing dude. You know, I remember like you know I have my own event out here in in, in Long Beach called Future Days. We do synthwave night, and I had him uh -huh. come out and perform back in June of 2019, and then that was just really really great because we got to hang out and talk and you know kind of get to know each other a little bit better in that you know and, and he's also like played that. with some he's a fantastic he's a gifted guitarist and he's played with some huge pop stars as well you know he we were really both kind of him. sessionists at, at the time now we're both artists which is interesting and you guys are really you guys are really making some amazing music i mean your uh your sound and the the you know but you being a you being a, a musician as well i mean being able to do that over the years and being able to play with these artists and, and being able to, you know, meld sounds and stuff like that, it's really kind of giving you those influences that you kind of ejected into your own sound as well. And yeah. uh, I mean, your your sound that I've heard on this on this release of yours is just so amazing. I mean, you have, you can hear a lot of different influences from it. It's just, it, it 
we're going to get into it in a minute, but yeah. I'm telling you from me to you, it just really great stuff for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I work with three producers for the album. Uh, uh, but, uh, but yeah, we were looking for, I was very particular um, as to what I was looking for and, and all the additions I was making, adding extra drums, extra synths, all the stuff that I wanted to add to it. Tons of harmonies, tons of, you know, the, lyri the lyrics are super important to me and the story and, but, but yeah, I think it, it came out really nicely. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. Really happy with it and, and with the three amazing producers that I had on board, so yeah. So what was your favorite part about working on Believer? Like what, what was the, what was the drive behind, behind the album? Like what did you feel when working on <laughs> um, I've mentioned this on a, on a few interviews already, but the, the main answer to that is that this album had to happen. It was my own personal therapy. It was my way of processing tons of emotions um, that I went through last year after a really difficult breakup and um, all the emotions I went through, um, you know, the despair, the sadness, like, how could you do this to me? How could you lie? How could you use me? You know, all the, all the emotions and all the stages um, to then realizing that time heals everything and that you finally start to move on, you know, songs like Recognize, uh, Will I Fall in Love Again, you know, or unable, I'm unable to feel anything. I hope that I find someone that will love me, but I'm numb, I can't feel anything, you know? So all the stages are there. Um, and a lot of looking back, can we go back in time? Can we not fall out and fight and argue and, and hate each other? Can we just go back to, you know, being friends at least? So that, that's all in the album, that's all there. and. Um, it was my way of putting out these emotions. It was really cathartic for me. There's a song in the album called Emotional and that I, I cried for two weeks writing that song. Like, I don't wanna to go too much into it, but it, it was so, so, so hard. And it's, it was just like journaling. It's just literally writing, you know, I feel emotional, emotional and I feel disposable. I feel like I'm nothing, you know? And it, it was just putting it all out. And um, what was scary was afterwards making all that public and going, hey guys, I'm a singer, <laughs> listen to my songs, you know? And that was actually terrifying because uh, you're opening up your heart and your emotions and your voice that no one really, I mean, people knew my backing vocals from all the Nina albums or, or, the, or the live shows, but, or they knew I wrote or I, they didn't really know what my role was, you know? Um, who I was writing for or what I was doing. So it was like being reborn and going, you know, this is me. This is actually, <laughs> this is Lao. I've just been, I feel like I've been hiding for a long time. Um, so it, Believer is, uh, it's my debut album and it's me being reborn into this solo artist after nearly 25 years in the music industry, finally going, Okay, I got the guts to be who I am. This is me. This is my sound. This is what I look like. Some people might like it. Some people might not. And that's fine, you know. But that takes a lot of guts and a lot of courage to, to do that. You know, in Synthwave, you know very well, Jack, that a lot of people hide. They won't show their face. They use just an avatar or a, you know, or a mask or, or, or whatever. So to, to put a face to the project, I think it, it takes a lot of courage and it took me years to do that. Years and years, decades to, to say, I'm a songwriter, I'm a singer, this is me. That took me a lifetime, a lifetime to do it. So it's nearly like a relief. It's like coming out as a songwriter, you know, this is me. Yeah. Hopefully some people will connect. We'll see, you know, we'll see. But it had to happen. You're right. It does. You know, and, and you're right. It takes a lot of courage to put yourself out there because it's you. At the end of the day, it's you out there on the stage. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, you know, as a performer, as a musician, you know, you've been, you're, you're used to going out on stage and performing and things like that, you know, with, with other artists and other things that you're pushing out. And then when you are there releasing your music, it's you on the line. You are exactly. there. Exactly. You get the criticism. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, it's 
the heart, the emotion, the soul of you and who you are and all of the experiences that you've gone through yeah. being laid out on the table for everybody to see, you know, yeah. so you're right, you know, in this, in this scene, in this scene that we're kind of all interconnected with, you know, you have a lot of people who choose to maybe not show their face or maybe not show all of themselves, you know, some people who choose not to, maybe they might have a voice, but they don't maybe want to sing on something or, you know, because they don't know maybe how it's going to be perceived or, yeah, you know, it's fear. Or it's, yeah, it's kind of fear. I, or, I, I did or it for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when they finally put it out, you know, it's like, this is me. This is what I want to say. This is my life. This is my, the glimpse into my world. And you're right. It is a lot like journaling. When you're creating a song, you are journaling. You are giving people a glimpse into your life, into your, and your mind, into who you are, and your mind. Yeah. Your thoughts, and, you know? Um, yeah, yeah to totally. I do a lot of call and response in my songs where I say something and I answer. It's like an afterthought. Um, I, I reply to myself and it's literally how, how I think. I think and then I reflect and then that's why you see on my videos, I clone myself and I talk to myself a lot. That's just how it, it's literally you're listening to my thoughts. You know, it's, it's really, it's, you, it puts you in a vulnerable position. It's you open your heart, you know, and hoping for the best, but there, there's going to be criticism. There's going to be the odd nasty comment maybe, and you got to be prepared for that. Unfortunately, you, you're never going to please everyone, but um, it's easy to say it, easy to say it. But uh, in reality, I, I was really too scared to, to do it. I could have launched myself a decade ago as a singer, but instead I chose to write for someone else and hide behind her face and her voice. And, you know, so why did I do it? I don't know. I don't know. It just happened. It happened. Well, I think, you know, it, it's all in due time. Yeah. You know, like we I had to learn at, a lot of things to get to where I am now. You know, I had yeah. to. But, you uh, kind of go like where, you know, in, within, if you think about it, like, uh, I'm a believer that um, we all have a, a role to play, you know what I mean, in our life, in, in, yeah. in, the, in, in human creation, we all have a role to play, you know what I mean, and the universe has has plans for us in a way, you know, if we continue, you know, opening ourselves up to to the universe and its possibilities, things will open up, things will happen when we least expect them to, as long as we're open for the change to come. Absolutely. And I think that- Listen to your heart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And when you start to do that, it's like, even though something you, you may have thought back, like maybe I should have did it then. No, when you finally do it and you finally do put it out, it's the right time because yeah. you are ready. You are ready. Yeah. That time is there. You are ready to put it out. It's true. So- and, yeah. and it's right, you know, fear sometimes can be, can be a, can really can be a killer. It can really can. It can, you know, it could stop. It paralyzes you. It, yeah. it really does. But I think that when you are put in a vulnerable position, when you open yourself up and you become vulnerable, that's when some of the greatest things happen. Mm -hmm. really do as far as creativity goes yeah. because then you kind of broke go, bottom yeah oh yeah you know that's when it's like you open up and you push yourself to the um, to as yeah. far as you can push yourself yeah that raw emotion and in this release like listening to it you get a lot of you get a lot of those feelings that come out it's a very feeling oriented album and yeah. it has a lot of great influences by a lot of uh you know artists that I can kind of hear peppered through that, you know, like yeah. things that you can kind of pull from. I know earlier we kind of mentioned a little bit, you know, a little bit of that Gloria Estefan influence a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And those Madonna. artists to me yeah. are artists that have gone through so many things, so many tragedies, so many different ups and downs, but they've came out stronger, you know, like yeah. everything they've gone through, they've come out stronger, you know? Yeah. Imagine all the shit they have to deal with, like at that level, like, you know, whatever uh, hate messages or, or, or stalkers or whatever they have to deal with. So they're not afraid to be out there and to be a massive superstar. They, they deal with it. You know, that's who they are. And then 
millions of people love them for it and connect with them for it, you know, but there's always that risk of, there's always going to be someone trying to hurt you or someone to put you down or someone to, you know, whatever. But um, you have to believe in yourself. And, and again, it's easier said than done, but eventually you reach a point where you go, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. Um, because I feel, because my heart's telling me to do it. I've got a, a voice and, 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 and thoughts and lyrics and emotions to put out and I'm going to do it and see what happens. Exactly. And I think we need to be a bit more adventurous like that, you know? We all do. I think we all need to be as adventurous as we can and we need to break out of the molds when we create, you know, like constantly. Yeah. Constantly build, 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 you know? It's like we can do anything we want. You know, we, our minds, you know, the, the, the only thing that's eliminated us is our minds, you know? So... I, you know, being able to be as creative as we can is definitely a big asset. And I think everybody can take a, take a page from that, from that book, you know, and kind of go, Hey, if I just speak from the heart and I speak from, from my soul, uh, I can, I, I know I'm not doing myself a disservice. I know that I'm being true and honest to myself and what I want to convey to the world. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. One of, one of the standout tracks that I absolutely love from this from this album you know one of the songs that if you will st when i say standout track it's the song that spoke to me at a personal level was recognized that mm -hmm. that to me was just like it speaks to me at that personal level and i know it's a very emotional track am i right yeah yeah i mean recognize is one of the most positive songs in the album there's there's two songs that are quite positive the message is about falling in love again recognizing something special in someone else and, and finally falling in love and feeling something again, which is, it feels like ages ago since I've been in love, you know? So it's me hoping that I will fall in love again. Um, you give me something I don't recognize, you know, it's been too long and I don't want to have to analyze. Um, we do belong together. So that's, those are the lyrics. Um, and um yeah, it's, uh, again, it's just going through all the emotions in the album, you know, every single emotion I went through. Um, and, and that's one of them. It's wanting to fall in love again. And uh, there's another song called Unable that kind of in the similar vein is saying, I'm unable to feel anything. I'm unable to love. I'm unable to do anything. But can I, will I find someone that will love me? <laughs> will, uh, you know, I really hope that I, find somebody, you know, kind of thing. I, um, it's, a, it's a hope, hopeful thought is maybe I will fall in love. Now I'm healing and now I'm feeling a little bit better, you know? Um, but yeah, this, uh, they're all very personal songs. Each one of them, all 10 tracks are super personal. And, uh, and I think that's why a lot of people are feeling moved by them. It's honest, you know, um, it's my, no one else wrote them, you know, the, the, the lyrics, it's, it's all mine, you know? And, and yeah. I think it's, it's like, here you go. It's like saying it all out and, um, and hoping that people connect or that, you know, a lot of people have gone through it. And uh, I connect with songs that, I remember songs from Adele or Robin, uh, like 10, 15 years ago that, that when I was going through other breakups or other things that I would listen to those songs and I'd be like, oh, she's singing my life right now, you know? I'm in the corner watching you kiss her, oh. I was going through a breakup and I would see my ex snogging someone while I was DJing. Um, in that same club, she would be there snogging someone in front of me and I was like, that song is made for me, you know? Yeah. And that's what a great song makes you feel. It makes you feel they wrote it for you, for that yeah. moment, you know, and, and you just go, oh my God, you know. So yeah. I don't know. It's just incredible to, to feel that with music. It's, and we connect with music, you know, it's, it's, I think it's amazing. That's true. I mean, because, you know, that's the thing. It's like um, you're triggering that human emotion. You know, you are listing, uh, you know, things that happen in your life. You are conveying the things that you want to talk about, but it's also helping somebody cope with something that they're, that they've had to cope with, you know, whether it's something hard or something positive, you know, it, whether it's triggering happiness, sadness, 
uh, a reflection of their life as a as a whole you know yeah them questioning certain decisions that, they, that they've made or maybe having to weigh a decision that they're going to make it's it, music has this way of helping you get through this this hard thing that we deal with every day and it's life that's just mm -hmm. you know life is very heavy life is very draining i mean and we've we've experienced this over the past year 2020 has been a very emotionally draining year for a lot of people in so many yeah. different ways and we're not just talking just the just dealing with the pandemic we're talking about you know relationships people you know i mean yes the things have been triggered by the pandemic but also too it's like you know people not just being sick but like people having to deal with things you know emotionally physically mentally yeah. All massive changes, changes in the way we relate and we we communicate, you know, changes in everything. Yeah, it's been a year of so many changes. I mean, not being able to go to, to concerts, not being able to, to hug your, your mom or to hug your, your grandparents because you think like, oh God, I could kill them if I get close to them. You know, you, yeah. it's been horrible. It separated people. It put this massive distance, you know. Um, it's been horrible. The, the, the thing I've seen as a label as well is I've seen people started to consume more music than ever because they had the need to connect and to feel something. We're all kind of as isolated at home and we still need art and we still need music and we still need to connect in somehow, you know. Of course we got Zoom, and, but, but that's, that's not enough. We want, we want to feel something and we can't go to concerts, we can't go to, uh, to you know, plays. Uh, whatever art exhibitions we can't do that so we have to do what we can from home you know yeah um, and uh, i think it's it's also helped people to become stronger if you will because a lot of people who have been isolated have had to deal with a lot of the demons if you will you know that they've had in their own personal life you know what i mean they've had to kind of face the mirror you know with being in that alone time because usually in regular oh, times yeah. it's like you could go out you can do things to get your mind off of certain things yeah but i think like being in these position that we've been in for this entire year the reflection is there you know you're yeah. staring at yourself in the mirror going there's you know, no escape yeah there's no escape like what can like what am i going to deal with today like how can i deal with these things that have been weighing so heavily on me and i think a lot of people have started to come out the other side very strong you know yeah. and, and they've they've managed to turn that those personal demons into fuel for creativity and i absolutely. think absolutely i've absolutely seen lots of new artists come up loads of new artists throughout the pandemic uh, for the yeah. same reason now they're working from home and they got time and you know and and again lots of emotions to put out and i think that's the best the best therapy definitely you know, get it done get it done get it out there what was the drive behind getting you into making music I mean, I, I was always fascinated by the drums. So I was always a, a drummer at heart since I was a teenager. I had an all girl band uh, from girls from high school. We were around, I think we were 17 years old or 16. And, and, and it was always like a hobby drumming. And then eventually I moved to the UK when I turned 21 and I wanted to make music my career. Like I was like, well, I, I want to do music all the time. So I'm going to turn that hobby into uh, a career and see if I can make a living out of it. So I went to university, studied music in London, uh, got a, a music degree and, and then started touring for all these pop stars. Um, so at the beginning, it was just me performing. It was just being a drummer. That was the main thing, which I really enjoyed and I loved. And, and for me, it was really easy to do. And and drumming is like dancing. So for me, it was so, it, I would, you know, I used to, I just loved it. I would feel so happy on stage drumming. Um, you'll see all, any photo that I'm drumming and you're gonna see always, I've got like a massive smile on my face because I really enjoyed it. Um, but then it turned into, I was always sort of a songwriter in the back of my mind or there was a hidden songwriter there somewhere. Um, and I used to write songs with my guitar and, Slowly I became a producer and then I became a DJ for like eight years with a friend of mine. Um, 
and I was always co-writing and writing for someone else. I would sing it first and then I would let someone else record it. And I was always doing that. I was too shy to sort of put out my own vocals, you know? So I was always writing and letting them then re-record it and put it out. And I did that for like, for so long, for like a decade. And um, I think what's, what's keeping me in music right now is this, this need to get my, my songs out, my voice and my emotions out. That's what's inspiring me today. And I think it, you know, we, we changed throughout the years. You know, I was, I'm not the same person I was when I was 16. So for me now, I'm a little bit more mature and I've lived through life and I've had lots of experiences. Um, it's just to tell stories, you know, tell my story or, or, or just tell sto good stories, good songs that people can relate to. Um, I want to move people. I want to inspire people. I've been inspired by female drummers when there wasn't many female drummers 20, 25 years ago. Um, I've been inspired by amazing songwriters and, and bands. So I, I think to inspire, to create something new, to turn a positive uh, or a negative into a positive, to tell a story, you know, the, all, all those things inspire me and keep me in music. Yeah, there. That's really important, you know, like that, that right there, being able to take something that you know is a negative and turn it into a positive, and really kind of just help to shed light on mm. on creativity is is just so important. And I think a lot more people are are really kind of becoming in tune to that nowadays. Is that you can you are part of a larger thing, you know, you really are because you're helping to push emotion and and narrative forward in this beautiful genre you know even in, in, in any genre really but uh you know in, in any of anything that you do you know like yeah. even like we're touching on you know your drumming and stuff like that you starting out like that and then writing songs for other artists to do it's like even though you may have been playing for somebody else or may have been you know you writing your music and having somebody else say it you're you're still there at its heart and at its core. It's still you. It's still what you wanted to say. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think that's, that's, you know. But I never put my face to it, you know. And now, now I'm so, so happy to do that. Like I, I want to make sure my face is on everything that I do because I'm, I'm proud of it. Um, and that was really important, just to be on the cover of my album. And it's the first time in a long, in, in, in ever that I'm doing that. So for me, it was a a big, big step to do it. Um, but what you were saying about we're part of a bigger thing, um, something that's happened to me and that is happening now as well is once you put out a record, it's not yours anymore. It's the people's. Like people can, people will um, put whatever meaning they, whatever they get from the song, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna put their own uh, story to it, their emotion, their own backstory, um, but it's like it belongs to them. You know, I've, I've got so many messages about, oh, I'm going through a really hard time. Your music's really helping me get through this, and you know, and or people imagining what they think what I wrote the song about, maybe, and it's slightly a different version of why I wrote it, maybe. You know, but that's the beauty of it. It, it's like you create any art, you create it and it's really personal and then you put it out and you kind of let it go. And it doesn't belong to the artist anymore. It kind of belongs to whoever wants to listen, whoever, whoever wants to look at that picture. Or, yeah. you know, it's, it's really interesting because it, it is a bit like you give birth to this thing and then you got to let it go, let it go. Yeah. And uh, while we while we write for ourselves and we write the sounds that we want to, you know, we write the songs that we want to write because, you know, the influence, the influences are there in our lives and we want to push it out to the world. Once it's out there, it is taken on its own, its own thing. It has become yeah. something, it becomes something greater. And uh, a lot of artists, sometimes they, they don't really see that. Like, the, it's important that we see that because while we are writing music for ourselves, really in all actuality we are writing music for the world to enjoy you know yeah. we're writing for that 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 right there is is an important thing it's become something larger than ourselves something bigger than than what we are 
And yeah. uh, I think that being able to do that is helping. It, it helps it. I know some people, they might think, well, what, how do my songs aren't going to help anybody? My songs aren't going to change things for people or they're not going to be inspired by stuff. But you realize that whatever they you're do. putting out is helping to inspire somebody else to follow their dream or to deal with something that's heavier, deal with yeah. something that's emotionally draining on some level or to incite happiness, like we were saying, or incite something to help awaken something inside of ourselves yeah or make them dance or make them laugh or forget about the problems for three minutes you know three and a half minutes that a track lasts um yeah. i've had messages of oh yeah i just i just want to dance i'm so happy listening to this song i just forget about everything put your album on and you know and that's great that's the whole point that's the whole point of it is enjoy it you know put whatever music's gonna make you happy and make you forget all the problems in the world for like half an hour you know that's the whole point it's it's um, but it's such a personal thing it's such a personal thing um there's no formula to it um you just have to be honest and you know there's yeah, the, exactly. there's, there's music yeah. for every for every taste out there so people connect with different kinds of music so i encourage people to make music, write music, someone will listen to it, someone will connect to it. There's audiences for everything, for everything, you know? Exactly right. What are you looking forward to accomplishing the most moving forward? Well, there's two things. I want to I wanna keep putting out albums. So obviously I'm, I'm already thinking of, of the next album <laughs> um, and uh, I'm already writing a couple of new songs for the, for the next album in, with the next album in mind, but I think I'm never going to stop making music. That's something that it's always going to be there. But what I want to focus on now is the live show. Um, I've been offered live streaming shows and I, I turned them down because I, my head was somewhere else. I was finishing the album. I was doing lots of press. And um, now I'm ready to start looking at the live show. Um, I know I won't be touring for like a year probably, but even if it's a streamed show, I want to make sure it's a really good show. Um, and, and, just trying to imagine how how can I take all my songs and have and play them live, um, and I've got this idea in my head that I want to clone myself, um, which I don't know how I'm going to do it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's I think that's my that's my next thing, and and I'll and keep collaborating with some amazing artists. I feature on the few songs that are going to come out, um, so just keep collaborating, you know and keep doing what I do every day. <laughs> I'm quite happy with it. Well, that's awesome. You know, I, I would love to see, I cannot wait to see some of these live streams because I think cloning yourself is going to, it's a really great idea. I think that's really awesome. You know, like being able to be like here on one, on one, one piece of music and here on something else. I mean, that's, yeah. that's really, that's really cool. I mean, that would be a really awesome live stream to tune into because, Hey, I get to see yeah. you like three or four times, you know? Uh, that's 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 really amazing. I think that shows ingenuity and creativity. That's one of the great things about these live streams. And I will say for a lot of artists out there and anybody watching, you know, artists, musicians, or even the fans, is that during these live streams has really given us free reign to be as creative as we want to be. Because yeah. usually when you're in a in a live setting or a live environment, you are kind of shackled to that to that area that you're in and you're able to play within that space. But when you are able to do live streams, your mind can go crazy. Your mind can can do all kinds of crazy things. You know, yeah. whatever you want to dream up, you can do because you have the time to work on it and make it the way you want to make it. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, that's that's the idea, and I've I clone myself in all my videos anyway. But um, I I wanna I wanna be able to do it on in a live situation, like to have a show that I can go on tour and do that. So that's the challenge. That's the challenge. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but um, I can I can visualize it, and I can I, I sort of have an idea already. So so that's kind of what, what I'm planning. You know, is uh, keep writing, keep collaborating. With amazing people start getting the live show together that's it really enjoy life you know enjoy barcelona this beautiful city that's it i mean what else is there <laughs> you're right you're right that's right they enjoy the little things enjoying the little things and and uh keeping as busy as we can be you're exactly okay. right what positive message would you give your fans out there i would say um similar to what we talked about earlier but um 
don't be afraid to to write and to put out your art you know your music your your your, your paintings your photo photographs your your dance your books anything anything your art is don't be scared to get it out there um i know it's not easy but um someone out there will connect and someone out, out there will listen to it and 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 it will it, it can change their lives or it, uh, it can inspire them it might help them through a difficult time you, you just never know so i encourage you to do whatever art you do don't stop do it do it the world needs it that right there wise words are from lao you know, take those in, you know, it's like, don't be afraid to push out your creativity to the world. A lot of the times our minds hold us back, you know, because we don't know how our music may be perceived or what we want to share with the world may be perceived. But if we don't do it, we don't get it out. We don't try in some way, then we may look back years from now going, why did I not do that? Why did I not take that chance? Yeah. You know, and then also too, on the other side of that coin, it's like, sometimes right now might not be the right time sometimes a few years from now or a few months from now might be the right time it's it's you have just have to listen to your gut listen to your heart yeah. listen to your soul. And, and, and if you listen to that you and will. also trust that you're going to get better and better and better trust that process as well um no one you know i went to the uh, picasso museum here recently and uh he would do like 12 times a painting before painting the final pa painting that we actually see and, and that we know you know so even genius artists they would have had to try 12 times until they get it right and they create the masterpiece so so remember that you know no one no one's born i mean no one's mozart okay there's one mozart but in general a lot of people have to they, they just get better you get better as an artist you get better as as you tune into your emotions and you whatever art you do, you just get better. So don't, don't give up, don't be discouraged. You gotta start somewhere. So, you know, start, start when, you're, when your heart tells you to do it, do it. Listen to your heart. <laughs> exactly, listen to your heart. And above all, be true, stay true to your convictions, stay true to who you are. You know what I yeah. mean? Because when you do, you really will go some amazing places. You will. You just have to be able to open yourself up to the world, to the universe, and just let it in and just shine and let your voice be heard. Yeah. You know, it's so important because, you know, if you can do that and you can lay yourself on the line and you can show what you have inside, you have achieved that next step. You really have because that's when some of the most amazing things happen in the world is when we open ourselves up. Yeah, really. 100%. So everybody out there, keep building, keep creating, and keep making amazing things happen because when you do, you will go amazing places. So thank you so much, Lau, for taking the time to sit down and do this interview today. Thank Pleasure. you to everybody out there who tuned in to watch us have this conversation. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to our Torfing YouTube channel as we have many more awesome artist interviews on the way, just like this one with Lau. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Thanks, Jack. It was great chatting to you. It was so great being able to sit down and, and chat with you as well. And to everybody out there, if you haven't checked it out, go and check out Believer right now. It's out on all major streaming music platforms. It's so amazing. Got so many amazing sounds to it. She's done some really amazing work here. From me to you guys, you guys are really going to go on a journey. You guys will really, really love it. So check it out. Listen to it in its entirety. Fall in love with it because... Yes. It is really amazing stuff. <laughs> Thanks. So thank you guys <laughs> Thanks, so much. Thank you, Lau. You're, you're amazing. Pleasure. Thank you so much. And have fun in LA.